Welcome to the RK68 modding guide. Let's jump right into modding it. But if at any point during the video you want to check out any of the materials or the RK68, you can click right over in the left corner. But let's jump in to step one. All right, step one is to grab your RK68, remove all the keycaps, and then remove your switches. You're then going to unscrew the six screws holding in the plate and the PCB into the plastic case. Moving to step two, set aside the case and grab the PCB and the plate. And at this point, we are going to remove the stabilizers. Now these are plate mounted stabilizers, so they're gonna have little levers or pins that you're gonna need to press in to remove them from the plate. So press in those little pins and pull up at the same time and those should pop right out. Do this on both sides of each stabilizers and now you can easily remove them. After that's done, you're going to disassemble the stabilizers. You're gonna do this by holding the housing and the stem and then twisting the wire 90 degrees so that it's vertical. You should hear a snap and then you're gonna pull straight out. After this, the stem should come right out of the bottom of the housing and the wire should come out and then repeat that for all of the stabilizers after they're all out and that is how you disassemble them. Now grab some toilet paper or paper towels to clean them off. Now, if you wanna be really thorough, you can wash them and let them dry, but I'm just gonna use paper towels. Moving on to step three, we are now going to mod the stabilizers. Separate the housing, stem, and wires. Next, we're gonna make this a little bit easier than my typical modding videos, because rather than holy modding, we're just gonna wrap the wire with medical tape. You can also use band-aids if you have those. So how you're gonna do this, you're gonna cut a small piece of tape like I am doing right here, and you're gonna wrap it around the end of the wire for all of the wires. Now do make sure that you don't overlap the tape over itself because if you do this, it won't fit back into the stabilizer. So make sure it's just perfectly flush. Now that that's all done for all the wires, let's move to the stem. Now we are gonna clip the two opposite feet on the bottom of the stem that protrude and act like little springs. You'll see on the bottom of the stem, there are two feet that protrude. These just make it less stocky and kind of are supposed to act like springs. However, it just makes it less stocky. So what we're gonna do is clip these legs off. Now I'm using a micro cutter, but you can use scissors or whatever, or you can buy a micro cutter. They're not super expensive, but you do wanna clip these so that the bottom is completely flat. So actually part of the top will protrude past the bottom. So you wanna get that entire leg off and clip it so that it's flat and it looks like that. All right, step four is time to lube the stabilizers. After this part, it gets very easy. Okay, we're gonna use 205 grade zero and dielectric grease. First, grab the stem and apply 205 grade zero lube to the left and the right walls. You do wanna do this evenly. You don't wanna just coat it on. Then repeat this for the housing, but on the inside walls. After this, grab your stem and make sure not to touch the lubed part, the left and right walls, and then insert it into the housing, making sure that the sides with the two holes line up with the opening of the housing. If you don't do this part correctly, your stabilizers will not work. After the stem and housing are back together, we're gonna take the modded wire with the tape around it, and you're gonna take your dielectric grease. At this point, you're then gonna put the end of the wire with the wrapped tape around it into the grease until it hits the 90 degree point. You're then gonna repeat this and do it past the 90 degree point because there is contact points there that we do wanna lube. Now that that's done, we are ready to reassemble. Put the wire back into the stem and the housing at a vertical angle, then once inserted to the bottom hole of the stem, turn it 90 degrees until you hear an audible click, and it's all back together. Do that with all of the stabilizers, and we're ready to move on to step five. Now for step five, go ahead and take your plate and PCB, flip it over, and we're now gonna unscrew the four screws on the back, then set the PCB aside and flip the plate over to the front. We're now going to Band-Aid mod the plate, and this is gonna keep the stabilizers from wobbling. This is incredibly easy, and it definitely helps a lot. So take your medical tape or Band-Aid, cut a small piece as I have done here, then place it in the stabilizer slots like I have done here. You just wanna put it in a spot where it's gonna fit nicely. After you've done this for all these stabilizer slots, go ahead and reinstall all those stabilizers. All right, step six, as the PCB and the plate are apart, we're gonna add a PCB and plate dampener. I get these felt ones from Amazon for 10 or 11 bucks and they make my job a lot easier when modding this. Again, you can check this out in the links below or in the left corner. But let's go ahead and place this on the plate and cut the necessary holes out for these screws. Now warning, make sure that you 
also cut out the holes for the case screws as the standoffs rest right on the plate and the plate and the PCB won't sit right if you don't cut these out. I had to redo this after putting the PCB and the plate back together. So after you've got that PCB and plate dampener all cut out and done correctly, you're gonna completely reinstall the plate and the PCB again with those four screws on the back of that PCB. Moving on to step seven, case dampening now. You're gonna use foam, butyl rubber, uh, rug gripper, really whatever you want, but I'm actually gonna be using silicone, which is actually not as hard as it sounds. Now to do this, we're first gonna tape off any holes for this board specifically. There's only a USB-C hole, and then I added more tape on the left side to get kind of a grip to get the silicone up. We then are gonna prop the board up so the silicone sets flat by putting used pieces of that PCB dampener on the left and the right front part. You do wanna do this so that the silicone sets really flat-like and it doesn't actually press that PCB up and not let the whole keyboard get together like it's supposed to. Then you're gonna mix part A and part B in a one-to-one -one ratio together in a cup and then stir it together for about three to five minutes. Then all that's left to do is pour the silicone into the case and this part is pretty important. When you are pouring the silicone in the case, there's kind of a ridge in the middle of it that dips down towards the right side but is very high on the left side. Don't go over this part as that ridge actually sets against the PCB. So if you do go above that, you won't actually be able to set your PC back into the case. So make sure you don't go over that, but if you don't, it's perfectly fine. And then just let this sit for a couple of hours. Then moving on to step eight, while the silicone is drying or after you have filled your case with foam or whatever you filled it with, we are gonna put our switches into the PCB and plate. Now I'm using Kale Canary tactile switches from LTC. I do recommend lubing them or whatever switch you're using, I do recommend lubing them. However, due to time constraints with the holidays, we weren't able to. However, we're gonna place these switches into the PCB and plate, making sure to hold the back of the PCB while you are doing this to make sure that none of the hot swappable sockets break off. So all you're gonna do is when putting in a switch, just make sure you hold the back of that same switch and you should be good to go. Now, after all of those switches are in, let's move on to step nine. And after the silicon has set, cut out a small piece where the USB-C will sit just to make space for that PCB to sit nicely. Then go ahead and place the PCB and plate back into the case and screw it down with those six screws. And moving on to step 10, the last and probably the most fun, go ahead and put your keycaps on. Now I am using Yunzai milk keycaps, which are super cute. Got that cow up in the top left corner, very cute. These keycaps are also really impressive for 45 bucks. They are nice and thick PBT, which is very cool. And they're always available on Amazon. So check the links below if you do like these keycaps. However, these keycaps are cherry profile and no, there is no interference with these switches. So yes, I know I'm gonna get comments about that, but no, there is no interference, but look at how this thing looks. Let's get a before and after sound test. This is how that RK68 sounds before and after. Take a listen. But yeah, I'm overall really happy on how this thing came out. Again, if you want to check out any of the stuff I used to mod this or the RK68, you can check it over in that left corner or there's Amazon links below. But yeah, I definitely would have sounded better if I lubed the switches. However, couldn't do that. Uh, next time. However, I'm overall very happy with how this came out and it was really fun doing the silicon mold, which I'm definitely going to be doing in the future. But look at this thing. It's super cool. I really like the blue and pink theme. Overall, just a really fun build. But I was actually really impressed how the stabilizers came out, especially that space bar. Take a listen again. Oh, that thing sounds nice. But yeah, definitely recommend doing the silicone because it is quite fun and it's actually much easier than doing some foam mods or some case mods because all you gotta do is just set it in there and then wait. Uh, so if you don't wanna wait, do a normal foam mod, but if you do like waiting, I mean, look at this thing, guys. I'm just rambling on because it looks so cool. Also, if you are interested in the cable that I'm using, it is the Aseni Custom Coiled Cable in white. This thing looks awesome. But yeah, overall, super happy with how this build came out. Let me know in the comments below which keyboard you want me to do a modding guide on next. But this is a Consumer Tech Review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.